YouTube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and this is my bookish week for Sunday, January, is it the 28th? Um, I don't remember. I think it's the 28th. Okay, let's go with that. Let's go with that. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you about a couple of books I finished, what I'm currently reading, um, but I, I wanted to talk about something first. This I'm filming this on Saturday morning. It's like 11.20. And I, about noon, one of my friends is picking me up from book group and we're going to meet two other friends. We're all going to go to lunch and we're going to visit a bookstore that we've been to many times that is closing. And this is called Portsmouth Book and Bar. Yes, you heard that right. It's a bookstore with a bar in it. It is phenomenal. And it's so sad that they're closing. It's all financially related. Um, so we're going down today. Tomorrow on Sunday is their last day, or when you're watching this, today will be their last day. And it's just so sad because we've actually held a book group meeting there. We've gotten drinks and appetizers, which were so good. We've bought books multiple times. I've been there alone. It's really, really sad. It's an independent business that um, we learned about it quite suddenly that they had to close. And it's... I. I'm speechless. I just, there's so many bookstores near me <coughs> that are closing, all independent businesses. And there are a couple left that I, I pray do not close because they've been in business for years and years and years. So what I would love to do is make an effort to go there because when I go to an independent store, I rarely walk out of there without buying something because I want to, I want to support these businesses. And, um, yeah, so that makes me very sad, but we're going to enjoy, you know, spending time together, eating lunch, talking, doing some book shopping. And if I can get some footage, I'll I'll post some within the video. So let me tell you um, about a couple of books that I finished. <coughs> Excuse me. That's it's still lingering. I still have a little bit of the cough and I'm still a little bit froggy. So, yeah. Oh, another thing I wanted to say is I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Yes, I have multiple pairs of glasses. I probably have eight pair of glasses that I rotate, and it's all mood-based. I'm a mood reader. I'm an emotional person. I wear glasses based on my mood and the color, depending on what I'm wearing. So if you want to say something, if you want to make a comment about which glasses you like or the colors or whatever, you feel free in the comments. Be kind, but um, you can make a comment about it. Don't be afraid to. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, I do not spend five or six hundred dollars on each pair of glasses. Absolutely not. I order my glasses online and each pair is like eighty, ninety dollars. And I actually pay on I pay like a little bit at a time. So yeah, it's it's like it's like a lot of other people with things that they love multiple things of whether it's shoes or handbags or fishing poles or cars or, or books. Books are not the same. It's not the same. So let me tell you about the books I did finish last week. I finished When I Sing Mountains Dance by Irene Sola translated by the, from the Catalan by Mara Fay Lethem. Uh Sola is a Catalan author. And uh, that is that is a language spoken on the border of France and Spain. I had to look that up because I wasn't sure. And Sola is a poet and an author. Um, this book was really interesting. And the language is just beautiful. Oh, and this is published by Grey Wolf Press, an independent publisher. The language was beautiful. And it started off very poetic, very mythical, uh, witches and um, death and su some sort of supernatural paranormal um, events. Um, it, it fizzled out a little bit towards the end, and but I still really loved the book. And I, ironically, this is formatted similarly to North Woods, which I didn't enjoy that much because this is written as every chapter is kind of linked together. The stories are different, but the characters are linked. So it you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a really full picture if you picked a chapter in the middle and started reading it. It does read like short short stories with every character linked, but it's definitely a novel. It had more cohesiveness than Northwoods. And this book starts off with a a man who is out in a field with sheep 
and he is struck by lightning and dies. He's in, he gets caught in a rainstorm and a bolt of lightning goes right through the top of his head and kills him. He is a father and a husband and the first chapter is talking about who caused his death, why they caused his death, what they have to say about it, and how that affects his family, how that affects his wife and his children. And so the, the subsequent chapters talk of, from different perspectives, from his wife's perspective, his his father, his children, and then it keeps going to talk about friends and neighbors and uh, generations coming after them. It's very original, beautifully written. Um, it's quite short, and uh, I really, I really did enjoy it. It did fizzle out a little bit at the end for me, but um, it was a very full. Uh, rich book, very rich language. So very, I really do recommend this one. And the other book I finished was The Virgin in the Garden by A.S. Byatt. I buddy read this with Judy. This is the first in a quartet of um, Byatt novels. And uh, I've talked about this book already. This is the one that I bought a second used copy because the first one was much thinner, but the print and the font was smaller and denser. This one was much more enjoyable to read. This is a story of Alexander, who is a playwright, and it's set in the 50s when Queen Elizabeth was being coronated as a brand new queen after the death of her father. And he's writing a play about the um, Queen Elizabeth I. I don't remember. I don't know, remember if she was the first or the second, uh, the Virgin Queen. And he has recruited a bunch of people in his community to play all the different parts. He is an academic at a school in the English countryside, and uh, he is friends with a family headed by Bill Potter. So this book has a wild cast of characters. There are many different storylines. It is so densely written. It is A.S. Byatt, and she, she is an intellectual, a very intelligent person, I don't, I think she's passed away at this point. I will double check that. If I'm wrong, I will put it in the bottom of the screen. But it's, it's extremely beautiful language. But during, throughout the book, she inserts a lot of dense information that doesn't necessarily have to apply to the story. But I think she collects a lot of research. She collects a lot of, a lot of intelligence and she puts it on the page. But this book is so funny in so many places. Alexander, um, Bill Potter, Jenny, there's so many characters, Crow, Wilkie, and one of the main characters is Frederica Potter, and she is the person that it, the quartet, quartet follows throughout the series. And she is a 17-year-old teenager in this book. She's turning 18, and she plays the young queen in Alexander's play. So it's it's so funny and you read about their exploits, you read about the behind the scenes, you read about the relationships between the characters. And this is also Frederica's sexual coming of age story. So throughout the book, almost when you least expect it, it's very sexual, not in a gratuitous way. It has everything to do with the plot. But it was a little surprising, like, oh, interesting. <laughs> and <laughs> Frederica gets herself into situations that are um, dangerous to say the least, and could be traumatizing, but she's a much stronger person than that. And there were moments when I didn't believe a teenager in the 50s would make those choices and would act that way, but she's ahead of her time. So I'm really looking forward to continuing the series. Judy and I are going to pick up the second book in March, um, Still Life, which is not to be confused with Still Life from Sarah Winman. Uh, Still Life by A.S. Byatt is the second in the quartet, so we're going to pick that up together in March. And our plan is to read the whole quartet this year. Really looking forward to that. Okay, what am I currently reading? I am listening to Jane Eyre. It's my second read of Jane Eyre. I'm listening to the Audible production, which is narrated by Thandie Way Newton, who is an actress. She is brilliant at this narrating this book. It is beautifully narrated. She does the voices, and one of the reasons I love listening to audiobooks is when an actor reads them, or when it's nonfiction and either the author or a, an actor narrates the books. Because when an actor narrates a book, they put 
the the emotion and the drama into it and she is spectacular narrating this audiobook um i'm almost done with it i am probably 85 percent through and i will finish it i'll finish it in the car this coming week uh, much more enjoyable to me than reading it i read it a couple of years ago for the very first time and i talked about that on my channel and if i remember i'll link that video down below i am also reading george Eliot, a biography by gordon Haight. I had started reading this a while back and put it down, but I am re I restarted it. I'm reading it now. Um, I am preparing to reread Middlemarch in February and March with Classics and Company, and I will link their new video down below. They set up a channel specifically for Classics and Company, and they have a Discord. It is moderated by Anne Novella and Micah Cummins, and um, I'll try to put all of the pertinent links down below. I am so loving this biography. The way his style of writing is very fluid and narrative and um, really highlights Eliot as a person. This one was published the first time, uh, first time, yeah, in 1968. And Haight has a very um, pleasant way of writing. He shines a light on George Eliot uh, I'm only in the part where she's, she's a young woman and she is going to London. She has a very um, intellectual circle of friends. She was, a, she was so many things. She was more than just a writer. She was a translator. She was an intellectual. She was an essay writer, a poetry writer. She just did it all. And a very forward-thinking woman. Um, and this is a joy to read. I can't wait to keep going on this. I started reading Solar Storms by Linda Hogan. Linda Hogan is a poet and an author. She is a member of the she is a member of the Chickasaw Nation, indigenous um, nation, and this is a book talking about a young woman, Angel, who was sent away as a child because of traumatic early events, and she is coming back to her um, village of origin to to discover her history, to find out what happened and why she was sent away. She, it starts off that she is 17 years old and she comes back to this village, which I believe is on the border of Minnesota and Canada. And she is retrieved by um, an aunt, Aunt Agnes. But so far, I'm blown away by Hogan's writing. The The story structure is just, just beautiful. So I'm... Um, these two books, um, two of the, the better choices I've made so far this year, and I cannot wait to continue. Now, I'm going to be starting a book today. It's a very short one, and I might finish it today. If I do, I will come in with Editing Kim and tell you that I finished it. But this is Night by Edna O'Brien. She is a, an Irish author, a favorite of mine. This is um, a classic novel. It takes us through one long sleepless night with Mary Hooligan. I love the name hooligan. Uh, a lot of history with that word. My older daughter, just really funny. And this is kind of a, um, a wanton erotic night uh, from Mary. And of course, O'Brien's book was banned in Ireland. Most of her books, I think, were. And that's one of the reasons why I love reading them. But I'm going to um, pick this up today and we'll see if I get it finished. It's only like, um, how many pages... 100 and 117 pages. So that could be done in a couple of hours. Um, I have a pile of books that I hauled and I was going to tell you about them, but I don't think I will because the video is getting to the, po the end point where I like to keep it as far as timing goes. Um, yeah, I will. I'll leave that. Well, yeah, I'll leave that um, for a different video because I think I have... Do I have more books coming? I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. What I want to do now, though, is highlight a booktuber with under 1,000 subscri subscribers. And this is Gabby Likes to Read. I have, over the in the course of January, after the first of the year, there are typically a lot of new booktubers. And Gabby Likes to Read is really fun and interesting. I love her choice of books and her... and. Um, you know, the themes, and it seems like we have many books that we like to read in common. Here, you know, her picture's here, her channel is here. Uh, cat hair, go and check her out, please. 
she's really pleasant to watch and you'll probably see a lot of books in common. Um, wonderful presentation. So I've really been enjoying her videos and I'm going to continue to try to try to do that because as I've said in my previous video, I've discovered a lot of brand new booktubers, um, all different types and types of books they like. Uh, you don't have to like every booktuber's choices of books. You can love their personality. You can love their presentation. You can love um, the, the differences in the books that they love to talk about. And a lot of times that's the case with me. I'll watch a booktuber who's new and if they sit in front of books or bookcases, I will try to see the titles in the background. And if I see like more than three or four books that I've read and, and loved, I will definitely subscribe. Um, if I don't, I will still watch their video. And if they have an interesting presentation and conversational style, I absolutely will subscribe. And I urge you to do the same. So that's going to be it for me today. Like I said, if I can get some footage from our book outing today, I'll put it within the video. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.